real shame is that Ben Shapiro, who wears a yarmulke and runs the Daily Wire, created the Daily Wire, continues to employ her. He continues to profit off Jew hatred and anti-Semitism. And Ben, I'm telling you, the righteous God who watches all that we do will never will never give you or the Daily Wire any blessing, any blessing from the money you're making off Candace Owens. It's really a shanda. It's shocking that you would be employing an anti-Semite. And you know, Ben Shapiro, you and I both know that if MSNBC or if CNN employed someone who said that they love Kanye West or employed a host who said they don't know who was right on October 7th, you would be calling them out, Ben Shapiro, on your show every day saying CNN has lost their marbles. And yet you're doing this. It's shocking and disappointing. Guys, it's Candace. The rumors are true. I am free. Welcome to my locals page. So much to talk about. Obviously, I'm going to take a couple of weeks here just to rebuild and to refocus and to create something that is actually mine and something that can't be threatened or taken because it belongs to me. I can't tell you enough how much your support has meant to me over the years. We're just getting started. Join the locals page, obviously here. You can support me and my work as an independent journalist, as an independent podcaster. Um, we're still gonna be doing five days a week. There'll be tons of announcements coming in the next couple of weeks. And I guess the last thing I wanna say is thank you. For those of you that don't wanna be on locals and just wanna support in any capacity, you can head to gocandice.com. Thank you guys. All right, guys, so we got to talk about what probably is the biggest news of today, which is Candace Owens apparently getting fired from the Daily Wow. Or put it this way, they are parting ways, which means that Candace probably got fired, okay? Because I'm pretty sure that Candace Owens was a positive return on investment for the Daily Wire. Uh, however, Candace started saying things that the Daily Wire didn't like, specifically people like Ben Shapiro. Um, and she got fired for it, okay? And I think that this was something that most people kind of saw coming a while ago when Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro first started to get into public spats with each other. Uh, I think initially it kind of started with Candace defending Kanye West and his anti-Semitism um, that he was putting out there that he got in a whole lot of trouble over. Uh, and then it kind of escalated after the Hamas attack on Israel on October 7th when Candace Owens gave what I think is a nuanced perspective on the situation, not 100% one-sided in either direction. And Ben Shapiro didn't like that. And uh, he was caught on a camera talking junk, talking smack about Candace. Yes, uh, the, the question was about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this is disgraceful. Without a doubt. I think that I think that her her faux sophistication on these particular issues has been ridiculous. It's not faux sophistication; it's ridiculous. Everybody can see the moves that she's making and the things that she's saying, and I find them disreputable. Yeah. So what Ben Shapiro essentially arguing there is that well, Candace Owens' position on Israel and Palestine, which again is a lot more nuanced than I think most people's positions are, especially when you are on a hundred percent of one side and a hundred percent on the other side. Um, yeah, apparently that's fake sophistication, okay? I, I think what he's actually really trying to get at is that he doesn't believe that Candace knows as much about the conflict uh, as he does and that what she's putting out there is a way to seem like she actually has a sophisticated opinion on the subject matter when she really doesn't. Again, I think that's what he's actually trying to say. Uh, but regardless, um, again, that's kind of where things really, really escalated and it got to the point where uh, ben told uh, Candace Owens that, you know, she could quit the Daily Wire if she wanted to. And clearly and obviously at the time, that didn't happen, okay? Uh, Jeremy Boring, who is the uh, CEO of the Daily Wire, came out and said that, hey, Candace is not going to get fired, okay? Uh, as long as she doesn't say or do anything illegal, um, you know, we pay her to give her opinions. However, I think people already knew the writing was on the wall, right? That there was trouble in Wonderland between the Daily Wire and Candace Owens because of her opinions on that subject matter. And it only got worse because Candace ended up getting into numerous beefs with uh, rabbis. Uh, one of the rabbis, Rabbi Shumley, okay? The guy that goes on Piers Morgan a lot to argue with the pro-Palestinians. Um, you know, that guy, you know, started coming out here and accusing Candace of being anti-Semitic for criticizing him, his opinions in, in Israel on some things. 
Uh, and then she also got into uh, another um, argument or debate that went viral between another rabbi who basically accused Candace Owens of being anti-Semitic as well too for her critiques of Israel. And also apparently he made this weird comment where he basically said that if you are not a Christian, then the movie, uh, The Passion of Christ is also anti-Semitic. So your belief then is that the definition of anti-Semitism can necessarily change. Is that correct? It's not just my belief. It is the commonly accepted understanding in both the Jewish and academic worlds. Okay. This isn't, okay. As I said, that's why I quoted, this is a quote. It's a great thing from Lord Sachs, uh, you know, Jonathan Sachs. It's a great thing from Niall Eckett. This, this is just accepted as understanding of, you know, a cultural okay. anthropologist. So I... I would just say off the bat, I do not accept that definitions can just mutate. That is something that I, mean, I could debate that on. Like the definition of a woman, I mean, and I'm saying not just about Jewish people, I think that we have to have a concrete definition to work with because then you can just update and say, actually, I've changed that and now this is what constitutes yeah, anti Semitism. For me personally, if I thought that racism could just be an ever shifting uh, definition based on the experience of black people, it would be a remarkable power and I would be able to create something like BLM, which could say that everything was racist. So I am not going to be able to agree that definition should be able to transform according to what's happening during the day. But here's what I will say. If you could, just because I think it's really important um, for us to get to going through this article, because then you might be able to explain why you view it as anti-Semitism. If you could just give us what you are saying, the current definition of anti-Semitism is today, that would be very helpful. The current definition of anti-Semitism today has to do with what the feelings are. It has to do with anti-Zionism, number one. That is a definition. Anti-Zionism, anti-Israel is anti-Semitism. Okay. This is so you believe that Jewish people can be anti-Semitic? Absolutely. Okay. I don't get to tell a black man if he's experiencing racism. Mm hmm he knows. I don't get to tell you if you're experiencing misogyny. You know. If I make a comment and it's misogynistic, and you say, Rabbi, you know that was really misogynistic, my job is to say, wow, I didn't mean that. I apologize. That's not what I meant. A number of years ago, a movie came out called The Passion of the Christ. Did you, did you see the movie? Yes, it's a wonderful movie. Okay. And um, I saw the movie as well. I saw it the opening day and saw it twice. And I arranged for a screening of priest students, minister students, rabbinic students, rabbis, ministers, and priests. The Loyola Marymount when I was a professor. Okay. I realized something in watching that movie. There are two movies going. If you accept Jesus as your Savior, then that movie is so brilliant and so painful about his suffering that it, it, trans, it, it, it transcends everything else, and that's all you see. And I think you just said it was a brilliant movie, and, and as many of my friends did, Loyola, et cetera. And I think it was a brilliant movie, too, as well. If you don't accept Jesus as your Savior, you're not so emotionally attached to all the suffering that Gibson portrays so well. And so what you do notice, as an example, is are all the anti-Semitic things. So I had a discussion with a woman who's the senior vice president of Loyola when the movie came out. She said, Rabbi, there's no anti-Semitism. I said, actually, I'll give you an example of one scene. There's a scene of little Jewish kids who chase Judas and they morph into demons. And they're wearing modern 20th century yarmulkes and they have classic Jewish stereotypical faces and they morph into demons. And with modern yarmulkes, it's the, that trope of Jews as demons. And Lainey said to me, I don't remember that scene. And I realized in that moment, she was so emotionally involved in the suffering of Jesus, she didn't notice the anti-Semitism. But both are true in the movie. You may not have the desire to have that pain in your heart, but what I'm trying to tell you is, by having a conversation with Tucker Carlson. You're anti-Semitic, right? <laughs> that is what he goes on to say, okay? Because apparently everything is uh, anti-Semitism that uh, Jews don't like, okay? So, um, yeah, the a ADL came out and criticized Candace, okay? They got into this because Nick Fuentes had reacted to this interview and Nick Fuentes praised Candace Owens 
agree with Candace Owens, okay, um, and her anti-Semitism. Uh, so yeah, that, this is when the ADL jumped in. They say white supremacist and Holocaust denier Nick Fuentes is praising Candace Owens' vitriolic anti-Semitism. It's hardly surprising, but it does set off alarm bells when bigoted people come together to push an anti-Semitic agenda. It adds fuel to the fire of hate. Yeah, so Candace Owens responded to that and said, I am grateful they have turned their smear merchant guns on me. The world already knows my heart. Their attacks will have the opposite desired effect. Awaken world. Thank you, ADL. And then after this, um, Candace Owens got fired, right? Or, you know, she departed the Daily Wire. They decided to Part ways, okay? Now, what do I think about this? There's only so much I can really say because I don't know exactly what the terms were, okay, in regards to Candace Owens leaving. It doesn't seem like it was something that she necessarily expected to happen, but it did kind of seem like something that she kind of low-key was pushing for it because, you know, she kept poking the beast and we all knew that the Daily Wire, which, you know, again, has Ben Shapiro and is ran by, you know, people who align with Ben Shapiro and, you know, their beliefs in regards to being strongly pro-Israel, um, we all knew that they weren't going to tolerate Candace Owens' free speech for too much longer. I mean, come on. <laughs> everybody knows, okay, that everybody loves to play the free speech game until it comes to speech that you disagree with. And then at that point, you see who actually really believes in free speech and who actually really doesn't, okay? Now, here's the thing. Um, the Daily Wire can say, look, well, we just don't want to do business with her. And that's fine, right? I mean, it, it, that is their, um, you know, prerogative. They say they don't want to do business with her because they disagree with her opinions. But it's really hard to come out here and to complain about cancel culture or to brand your company as a company that is against cancel culture when you are canceling one of your own uh, simply because she disagrees with you on this one subject. And all other subjects, I think she's basically in line 99% with the Daily why? Okay, I, I find it to be fascinating how all of a sudden there's concern about uh, the bigotry of Candace Owens uh, when it comes to anti-Semitism. But when Candace Owens was being smeared as a bigot and a racist for her criticisms of BLM, her criticisms of George Floyd, her criticisms of the left-wing uh, race agenda, that was totally fine, right? Daily Wire didn't have anything to say. They didn't speak out against her bigotry okay and, and this is where this whole conversation gets very fascinating to me okay because a lot of these people that are out here boohoo whining and crying anti-semitism over any criticisms of israel okay over basically everything that they deem to be anti-semitic right which again seems to me at this point to be anything that goes against whatever israel wants to do um these people sound like blm activists right they sound like trans activists they sound like woke activists to me, because they're trying to claim victimhood uh, over literally any types of criticisms of them. That's what it sounds like, okay? In that conversation that um, Candace Owens was having with that rabbi, it, it was very apparent that anything this rabbi found it to be offensive was anti-Semitic. And he was using the same woke talking points that blacks and gays and trans people use in order to shield any type of criticism of them and their agenda. It's the exact same thing, right? It literally is the exact same thing. And I think the beauty of what happened with Candace here is that she kind of exposed that, that these people are just woke activists. They're no different than the woke revolutionaries, right? Okay. They're, they're not. I mean, that's, that's just what it is. Okay. They, they want to take advantage of the victimhood card. They want to guilt trip you about things in history that happened that you don't have anything to do with in order to basically get what they want, right? To play victim. And then if you say, hey, I don't agree with what you want to do, okay? I don't agree with you on this situation or that situation. And it can be just, you know, a harmless disagreement. They say, well, you're anti-Semitic, right? Well, you're a bigot. Well, you must hate us. You know, you, you know, agree with Hitler, right? You sympathize with Hamas. This is what they do, right? And it's just one of those things where I think people are just like, all right, this is, you like, Again, you're no different than the leftists, right? And and that's what it is. I mean, look, here's the thing, right? Um, I get where Candace is coming from because as a black conservative, right, you you get a lot of criticism for black from black people for not allowing them to boohoo whine and cry and play victim. We get a whole lot of pushback for that, right? But I feel like, you know, hey, it's the right thing in regards to hey, I, I don't think that black people should be out here boohoo whining crime victimhood and racism just because they disagree with something, right? Just because they get offended by something, they're always racist. They use that to silence people, right? So basically, 
I mean, I, I must say, I've become an expert at, at identifying that. And I'm sure Candace Owens feels the exact same way. So, personally, I can't come out here with a straight face, right? And, you know, let it happen when other groups do the same thing, right? If other groups are doing the same thing, then I got to call it out, right? I, I have to say, okay, well, this this is wrong, right? It's wrong when trans people do it. It's wrong when uh, LGBTQ does it. It's wrong when blacks do it. It's wrong when Jews do it. Right, and it's wrong when white people do it too. Any group out here crying victimhood, trying to weaponize, calling people bigots and smearing people as a way to silence any criticism of them, uh, yeah, that, that's wrong, right? I mean, we, we should call that out, right? That should be something that, you know, across the board, people should say, look, we, we can't keep doing this as a society, right? So it doesn't matter which group it is. I don't think any group deserves any special rights or privileges. And I really do believe that, right? I truly do believe in treating people equally, okay, when it comes to that. And I really do think that this situation kind of highlights that, okay? Because, you know, look, here's the thing. I don't think that Candace Owens, in my opinion, has said anything that I would deem to be bigoted or hateful or anti-Semitic towards Jews. And I'm talking about something that is truly anti-Semitic, okay? I'm not talking about <laughs> all the things that basically have been now defined as an anti-Semitic trope, which is basically just disagreeing with Israel, okay? Or any type of criticism of, of Jews, okay? That, that's basically where the definition of anti-Semitism is at this point now. Um, I'm not talking about that, okay? Because Again, anything can be defined as anti-Semitism, just like anything can be defined as racism. Okay? And the reason why I'm saying that is because all the things I've heard her say, most of it has been criticism of Israel's response to uh, the Hamas attacks, which again, you know, I, I think that, you know, it, it is legitimate to say, hey, I don't necessarily agree with Israel, um, you know, indiscriminately killing civilians, right? This is what a lot of people argue, regardless of whether or not you you know, think it's justified or not. I'm not saying either way or the other. I'm just saying that I think it's fair game to say, hey, I don't agree with it. I also think it's fair game to say, hey, well, Israel's in a war. They're doing what they have to do, okay? I think that both sides are fair game. I don't think it makes you Islamophobic to have that opinion, saying that Israel is justified. I don't think it makes you anti-Semitic to say that, hey, Israel's not justified in what they're doing, okay? that That's what I believe. I believe that we should be able to openly debate these things without smearing each other as hateful and bigoted, right? That's all I believe in. That, that's what I'm asking for. And, and, and what Candace Owens is going through is exactly what uh, happens when you criticize, again, anybody on the left, okay, any group of people uh, in their agenda, and you say, hey, I don't like the fact that you're doing this. Okay, I don't like the fact that you're trying to teach kids about sex in school. Well, the woke mob comes out and says, well, you're homophobic, right? You're transphobic if you believe that. This is literally no different. It's the exact same thing, right? It's the exact same thing. And what really kind of blows my mind is that there are people on the right that participate in this, right? They participate in this smearing of people as anti-Semitic, but then we'll turn around and say, well, you know, we don't like that the left smears us as racist and white supremacists. Well, you're kind of using a leftist tactic when you smear people as anti-Semitic, which is basically what people like Ben Shapiro has been doing since the October 7th attacks. It's like, well, anybody that says, hey, I don't agree with what Israel is doing in response, I don't think that this is self-defense. They say, well, you don't think that Israel has a right to defend itself. No, I don't think that's what people are saying. I think people are saying that maybe they're going too far, right, in regards to what they're doing, okay? But again, you know, I'm one of these type of people where I say, okay, well, again, it's also wrong to say that somebody's Islamophobic for saying that, hey, Israel is defending themselves. Again, we don't give each other that type of grace in politics anymore, right? The easy thing to do is to silence people's opinions with the bigotry card, right? And, and, and I think that is what Candace Owens is going through. I think that the Daily Wire uh, folded to the pressure from, you know, Jewish groups in order to get rid of Candace because they're upset about her opinions. Um, and you know, it is what it is. I think this is a bad look for the Daily Wire. Um, obviously, there's some people that are going to agree with it and say, oh, well, they were right because uh, Candace is anti-Semitic or whatever. I don't think so. Not with the type of business model that they're trying to run. But then again, they're better businessmen than me, right? They know how to run their business and it probably won't affect them too much. I mean, the bottom line, at least in the short term, definitely will be hurt for sure. Um, but in the long run, you know, 
I think they'll be fine. And I think that Candace will be fine in the long run as well, too. I think that she has enough talent to go independent. Now, some people speculated that she may join Tucker Carlson. Maybe she might go to Valuetainment. I'm not entirely sure what she'll do. Um, but I do think that as an independent voice, she really doesn't need anybody. Um, she could actually build her own network if she wanted to. I would be more than happy to, you know, discuss, you know, having some type of network with Candace, right? Being on being on the network or whatever. That'd be awesome, awesome opportunity, you know? Because I actually really do believe in having a diversity of opinions, right? I don't believe in canceling people because they disagree with me on one issue or th this issue or that issue. I don't believe in that, okay? And I wish that people would stop pulling the bigotry card and smearing people as racist, sexist, transphobic, anti-Semitic. I really wish people would stop using these labels when it comes to political disagreements, but... Again, our politics has become so dumbed down in the West that this is what, what it is at this point, right? It's the easiest way to silence an opinion that you don't like. So um, that's my take on this situation. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black and sort of perspective. Peace.